migrants before the end of the year, potentially millions after that. Do we have Alex on the line yet? We've got Alex. So you heard me talk about that there, Alex. Are Germans even aware that these rape cases are happening? Is the media cover-up in Germany successful at this point? Well, uh, it, it used to be pretty successful because normally you have like 250,000 people coming here per year. But now, of course, it's up to 800,000. Now everybody's talking about it. Everybody is talking about it. And I've looked at a scientific study, and it's a mainline study, and uh, I'm sure there are similar studies on American immigration. And the study says that 25% of migrants coming here are um, backwards, radicals, um, sometimes criminal. And uh, if you do the numbers, that makes four million troublemakers in Germany. So uh, in a country with 80 million people. So just to give you a comparison, um, Germany right now has 180,000 active military personnel, severely under-equipped, a quarter million cops. Of course, they don't work at the same time. Uh, uh, at any given hour. And then we have a couple of thousand folks working in intelligence. That's it. How can they possibly manage four million troublemakers in Germany plus uh, the the uh, quarter uh, percentage of new migrants coming in that are troublemakers as well? I understand. I, I, I looked at the study and, it, of course, 25 percent of migrants are overachievers. You know, people come from from Vietnam. They outperform German students and, and, and they do really well. And uh, another 25 percent of migrants, they, they do OK. They do well. Another 25 percent gets by, but 25 percent are real troublemakers. Uh, they've created a problem that is way too big for the German state to handle. So. What's going to solve this problem? Of course, Brussels. Of course, the European Union is uh, creating this uh, uh, this multinational border guard force, and they want these centers in these uh, countries of origin in North Africa and Syria. So people go to to these places, then they are being assessed, and then they're being brought here. So. Uh, this is uh, this is a serious problem. So if you can find studies like this on American immigration or no matter where you come from, find these studies and do these numbers and see how many million troublemakers, real troublemakers you have that have no loyalty uh, to your country. And that's that's the point, isn't it? You know, they're bringing in so many. Obviously, most of them you know, eventually, you would hope, will integrate, will assimilate into society. But with the sheer volume of people that are being brought into Germany right now, many of them by people smugglers, there are going to be huge problems for social cohesion going forward over the next 5, 10, 20 years. And now it's confirmed. I mean, I was saying 50%. I was merely going off of what the media was telling us, that 50% were, quote, Syrian refugees. It now turns out we've got the numbers. Only one fifth of these, quote, refugees are actually Syrian. The rest are economic migrants fleeing to a higher standard of living. Yet we've been browbeaten by politicians in Europe, by the media, into supporting this on humanitarian grounds when it's based on a completely flimsy and inaccurate statistic that 50% of these people coming in were actually Syrian. We now know that not to be the case. But from your research, the bigger picture, what is the EU and the politicians there in Germany hoping to achieve by rolling out the red carpet for this migrant influx? What is the long-term agenda geopolitically? Well, uh, every American listening right now needs to understand it's important to keep an eye on Europe because the global uh, power balance is rapidly shifting and changing. What the elite is doing in Europe right now is expanding the European Union into a Mediterranean super union. That's kind of a, a super empire that would match or surpass the other three big empires in the world, the United States, Russia and China. So. I think this Mediterranean empire is at the heart of this migration crisis. Uh, the people in charge, the politicians and, and people above them, they are mixing populations 
uh, through migration, and they create a common history among the different nationalities. Uh, Syrians have no idea about Germany. Germans have no idea about, Sy uh, about Syria. There is no common positive history between Germany and, and uh, North Africa. The only thing that, that comes to mind, if you're interested in history, the only thing that comes to mind is that dark chapter in, in modern history when uh, you know, General Rommel tried to uh, 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 conquer North Africa and then moved east towards uh, the Middle East and Syria, where he was stopped by the British and then the Americans came from the other side and, and pushed him back. So uh, they're creating an artificial common history that wasn't there before. Because you want to merge 43 completely different countries uh, uh, you want to include Turkey, Syria, Israel, and, and so on into this Mediterranean Union. That's kind of a, a hyped up version of ancient Rome. So in the last few years, this Mediterranean Union process has officially stalled. Uh, uh, the Mediterranean Union is supposed to exist only on paper, but the European Union is real. And they're playing a long game here. Ten years can make all the difference in the world. Uh, years ago, the bureaucrats were already shopping for a headquarters for this Mediterranean Union. At that time, you still had Gaddafi in Libya, you had Mubarak in Egypt and so on. So then the Arab Spring uh, revolutions, they got rid of these old dictators and their families, paving the way for the integration of North Africa, possibly Syria, into this Mediterranean super empire. Uh, so the flood of migrants right now comes from North Africa and Syria. See how that works? And if realized, this Mediterranean empire could be a, well, a uh, very close partner of the United States. There could be a merger in the near future in order to keep up with the empires of the East. I mean, you've seen the transatlantic free trade agreement. That's uh, a building block of this uh, uh, European American empire. But Every American listening to this uh, understand the following. A Mediterranean empire would have more than twice the population of the United States. The combined military force would be enormous, maybe even surpassing the American military force. And uh, if Europe or this Mediterranean empire produces more nuclear weapons, you have a super player on a global stage. And that shifts the power balance completely. I mean, uh, current, uh, current assessments say that the United States could barely win a war against Russia. So and we're going to come back after the break and talk about that with Alex Banesh on the Alex Jones Show live fourth hour Many overdrive. Many experts are predicting that food prices will surge right. this year. We're back, fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We'll be going back to our correspondent, geopolitical analyst, Alexander Banesh in Germany in the next segment. For now, we're going to talk to Leanne McAdoo. But first, I want to mention Brain Force over at the InfoWars store. Flip the switch and supercharge your state of mind with Brain Force, the next generation of neural activation from InfoWars Life. Now, I've been taking a similar product to this, which shall not be named for about two or three years now. And this is actually more powerful than that. And that already had rave reviews. Brain Force has got rave reviews. So I can't wait to get my hands on it when I come over to Austin there in a couple of weeks. So we've got that at the InfoWars store, $24.99. You can get discounts on higher quantities. We've also got Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirts, which are proving very popular. So you can find all that over at InfoWarsStore.com. Be sure to check it out. Leanne McAdoo, we had a, an article in Salon.com yesterday, which has pushed this mainstreaming of paedophilia for years and years. This is not the first instance of this. And this is a self-confessed paedophile called Todd Nickerson, who wrote an article published by left-wing outlet Salon, in which he called for readers to be, quote, understanding and supportive of people who are sexually attracted to children. I mean, if, if we thought we couldn't be any more repulsed by some of what the left comes out with, now we're hit with this. Break it down. 
Well, right. I mean, th these are the new oppressed class. So where was my trigger warning before reading this story? You know, it doesn't get to the very, it takes, you have to read the entire article uh, before he starts saying, you know, this is wrong and we need help. And maybe that's why there should be some alternative outlets for us to go to for help. Uh, but it's basically the media promoting pedophile rights. And, you know, Rick Santorum, I guess, in 2003 said that this is what was going to happen uh, when the country loses its its moral values. And here it's it's turning out to be true here. This this man is saying, you know, have sympathy for us. Be understanding. Uh, this is this is something that you know, goes so high up into our, our society. And it's, it's kind of funny how uh, this is being pushed in our face, but yet going back to the other segment uh, where other people are, are being silenced when talking about child rape. For instance, our U.S. soldiers who are being told to ignore the sexual abuse of children by our Afghan allies. And then, of course, the German media covering up rapes being committed there by Muslim uh, migrants. So on the one hand, it's getting pushed in our face here. Uh, and then it's also silent on the other side. So, uh, you know, it's it's just... It's pretty interesting to see how this whole uh, globalist agenda is unfolding, all this you know, order out of chaos, how it's being orchestrated. But, I mean, what do you make of this? This is the new normal. It's, I think it's, I mean, I've got a video about this coming up in a couple of hours on Infowars.com. It basically strikes at the, the heart of how left-wing identity politics is underpinned by moral relativism. So that's why they don't call out, you know, Muslim rape cultures. That's why they don't call out um, people, gay people in Islamic countries being thrown off buildings because they have no moral compass. They have no foundation whatsoever. And the key thing about this, he argues that pedophilia is just a different form of, quote, sexual orientation. Right. And he couches it all in this, like, I'm a victim of circumstance. This is just what happened to me. So if, if pedophilia is just a form of sexual orientation, I guess necrophilia is also just a sexual orientation, right? People having sex with dead bodies, should we accept and understand and support them in the name of tolerance? You know, bestiality, we're going to start accepting and tolerating that as a legitimate sexual orientation. Are we going, are we going to start accepting and tolerating people <laughs> who hack off their limbs right. because they find that erotic well there was actually an article that a don a don sent an article where a man has been banned from playgrounds because he is aroused by children's the slides at the playground so i mean these are it is just all bizarre but it's all the new normal and you probably shouldn't be racist by judging these people but i like how uh an article we have up that's out from louder with crowder he talks about would salon have posted the same exact article with the headline I'm a racist, but I'm not a monster. I've never discriminated against a black man, and I won't, but don't judge me harshly. And of course they wouldn't do anything like that, you know, or they wouldn't put an article about someone having rape fantasies. But, you know, I guess it's fine for pedophiles. And if you research the guy who was behind this article, you know, he talks about drooling over images of underage girls. He runs a forum called Virtuous Pedophiles. Yes. This is a sick, sick character, yet he's being given this platform. We're going to go to a break now. We'll, we'll be back with Alex Banesh, uh, flipping back to the migrant crisis and how it's impacting Germany. We're on the this march. We're back for the fourth hour live of the Alex Jones Show. This is Overdrive. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We're talking to geopolitical analyst and author Alexander Banesh, who is over there in Germany tracking the migrant crisis just before the last segment. We dipped into the fact that they're using this crisis that they've created in the first place to centralize power into fewer hands. Now, we had the Mediterranean, the Union for the Mediterranean, which was this concept proposed by EU leaders and Bilderbergers back in 2008, 2009, to absorb these North African countries and these Middle Eastern countries into this Mediterranean Union, which will then be allied with the North American Union, again, centralizing power into fewer hands as these federal super states, which are anti-democratic, which is what the EU has built its whole platform, its whole raison d'etre around, uh, into conglomerating into these huge power blocks that aren't representative, that aren't democratic, 
Now they're exploiting the migrant crisis for that very purpose. Now, Alex, I read a quote from Javier Solana, who is the former NATO Secretary General and a top Bilderberger, who was espousing this plan, this plan for a Mediterranean Union involving all these different Middle East and North African countries to absorb them into the EU. He said that it was necessary